Hello. Um, yeah, so as the title says, I, I did not dream of becoming an aromatherapist when I was a child. That was the last thing. I did, con no, it wasn't even the last thing. I didn't even know what the hell it was. Um, <laughs> and for years, it was my albatross. And yet at the same time, is it exactly what gets me out of bed in the morning is understanding, working with and loving essential oils. I mean, just really, really digging essential oils and bringing a voice to them or into the world for them. So I feel like I wanted to come on here today to actually just say that. I, I It wasn't something I woke up thinking, yes, I want to be an aromatherapist. I... Um, You know, I honestly, I don't even know what to say. Um, you know, I had a lot of interest as a kid. I wanted to be a dancer. I, I love science, loved mysteries, and yet had no clue what any, I had no idea what aromatherapy was. In fact, it wasn't really introduced into the English speaking world until 1977. And it wasn't, it was about 10 years after that that I was introduced to Robert Tisserand. But yet I found myself in this field based on being pulled by what interests me. Just what, I just, I, and I have been, um, I found myself, you know, dabbling in all different types of things, but it's all coming together. Like I said, you know, I loved dance, movement, fluidity is how I would describe that. I loved science. I loved mysteries. And even though these are such arbitrary facts, you know, just different aspects of my life and interest, it all kind of weaves into what I do now as the essential oil expert. But it, being an aromatherapist, being an expert in essential oils is not just about coming in and talking about what oils to use for what. Um, there's plenty of books and websites out there that will give you suggestions on properties. Um, I just finished an audio on along these lines that really talks about the reason why we don't get the results that we are looking for, and um, and it, it, the and I'll share it in a um, I'll share it in an audiogram here shortly, and it's about if we have the guts to think differently and to stick with it because the bottom line is you're going to be suggesting oils or people are suggesting oils and you chances are not getting the results that you would like to get and there's good reason for that but i don't want to get into that here but so that said there's more to being an aromatherapist than that and that's really the area that i have stepped into and embraced which involves a lot of the science and the mystery solving so in this case I've been talking a lot on Clubhouse with regards to oils and different chemicals because I do specialize in the chemistry of oils. And something that makes makes up essential oils is something called a benzene ring. And so I just wanted to touch on that briefly and really emphasize the fact that there's a real good reason why we want to begin to eliminate different types of solvents, especially if you're an artist or if you work in mechanics, and I know it's hard because we get into so much grease and thicky paints and so forth. But the fact is, is that a lot of our solvents contain benzene rings. Now, what I find fascinating is, and I get asked all, a lot about the effectiveness in plants. Okay, so, and again, we go back into questioning whether or not they're, they're even valid in work. Well, the truth of the matter is, we don't use enough of the oil to get, you know, just you're cracking results right away. It takes some resetting of the system because ultimately what's happening is our body is in survival mode. And in order to get into that anti-inflammatory aspect of living, we've got, to, we've got to amp it up. This is the reason why when you use um, a supplement or so forth, it, it has a better, a quicker result because it's concentrated dosages whereas essential oils are not you really would have to pick it up the amount of that you use so nevertheless scientists have been studying nature for centuries and they have gotten into the chemistry of plants and they understand now how a lot of these mechanisms work and how to apply them to the human body and a benzene ring is also known as an aromatic compound and the only reason it's called an aromatic compound is because 
benzene was one of the first chemical compounds discovered that actually had a mild fragrance to it and it ha it's a particular mo molecular shape that's the reason why it's called a benzene ring named after the original chemical that was found from but this benzene ring is found throughout nature and the truth is is that the human body cannot produce its own aromatic compounds but it does require it does require them for some functions and here's what they actually communicate with the DNA they have the ability to interact with the DNA and affect transcription of the DNA of the messages being coming out of the DNA basically and so what we found with these synthetic benzene rings the ones that are in solvents and so forth and um, uh, you know what I'm actually gonna post I'm gonna um, I'll put the link in the description box and I actually may put it in my I'll put it you know what I'll put it in the link in my bio so that you can get to it to take a look at this product list and begin to eliminate because what happens with these synthetic benzene rings is they're getting in and because they're lipophilic chemicals just like an essential oil is a lipophilic chemical and what that means is it requires oil to be to transport it into the cell so this is the reason why so many man-made chemicals are toxic this is the reason why we're seeing such an advancement in cancer because there's so many benzene rings and other phenols um, phenolic compounds which are also forms of benzene that are able to get in and corrupt the DNA transcriptions let me say that again the man-made chemicals have the ability to get into the DNA modify the communication to the degree that it's corrupting the transcription so therefore to begin to stop using these products to the best of our ability and increase the amount of plant-based you know diet and oils oils aren't the answer they're not the only solution and neither is diet it's the two combined the reason why is because oils contain our, our concentrated doses of these chemicals that when used appropriately and specifically to your body's needs have the ability to improve the way the DNA is signaling either inflammation or anti-inflammation so it, it goes either way and so the oils will actually help the body send anti-inflammatory signals out which helps us to thrive in the meantime paired with a nutrient-rich diet for the cofactors, your vitamins and your minerals and other phytonutrients are cofactors in the way the cells function. So this is a very important aspect to aromatherapy. Because keep in mind, these aromatic compounds are found in plants. Not just essential oils, but in plants. We need these because we cannot produce them on our own. So including plants in your diet and up your, you know, you know, on as as an oil in a bath, inhaling it on the skin. Great ways to use them. You have olfactory receptors on the skin, so they're being drawn into. Because by the way, an aromatic compound, there's olfactory receptors in the skin, lock into this air, this olfactory receptors, and they are drawn right into the body, right into the bloodstream in 15 to 20 minutes. Bam you it's fully metabolized to take a bath in it BAM it's fully metabolized so this is some really great ways to get oils into your system quickly and by pairing it with nutrient-rich diets you have the ability to offset and improve hey Laura um, improve the way your body is responding and not being taught in tox you know not being um, poisoned so to speak by these man-made benzenes because man-made benzenes are in fact harmful because they corrupt the way the DNA communicates whereas essential oils do the opposite and like I said this is not something that I woke up dreaming about when I was a kid was I'm going to be in a room with therapist because it initially it was it was rough but this is what I bring to the field of aromatherapy it's teaching people how to understand how oils will actually make a difference and especially when you pair it with nutrition because the two go together perfectly so that is it for today please comment below and like I said I'm gonna put that link to the list of products that contain benzenes because again benzenes are found throughout nature but we're, we're manufacturing them and they're being included in a lot of products especially paints I was seeing mineral spirits and paint thinners 
So for artists, this is really important. And I'm actually on a, on a task right now to find out if what essential oils we could use to help thin paint on our brushes so that we can actually have um, cleaner <laughs> painting sessions. So anyway, thanks very much. Comment below and um, let me know what you think of those products. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. See you soon.